Okay, we're back here live in New York City for uh, SiliconANGLE Gibbons exclusive coverage of uh, Moonshot, HP Moonshot. And I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and I'm here with Brent Julek, who is the Vice President of Application Services at Savas, a big cloud service provider many of you know. Brent, welcome to theCUBE. Oh, thanks for having me. So we saw you on earlier uh, doing the Q&A. That, uh, that was a good session. Um, so I want to start yeah. with, with Savas. I mean, you guys are a um, very strong brand in the cloud market space. Uh, give us a quick update on you know, Savas and then specifically your business, the application mm -hmm. services side. Yeah, definitely, I'd be happy to. Savas is a CenturyLink company. Uh, we specialize in cloud as well as managed hosting. We operate 55 data centers globally um, and with more than two million square feet of floor space. So as you can imagine, that's a lot of space to compress a lot of servers. So Moonshot, it really means to us is how can we better provide application services on top of these compute platforms. My group specifically deals with the product management and engineering of the applications that our, um, our sales and um, other divisions offer to our customer base. So we're constantly out there trying to figure out better ways to deal with web performance, uh, content, big data, database, middleware, and how we can offer that as, uh, as a more affordable model with more scalability to our customers. Yeah, John and I often you know, talk about the applications really where the business value is being mm -hmm. driven. It's the connection to the yeah. business. So um, you touched upon some of these items, but what are you looking for from an application development standpoint? What do you want out of an infrastructure? I mean, clearly we, we, wa we want something that's reliable. We want something that we can rapidly expand. Uh, we want something that has um, really um, much more geared towards our applications. And which this is the reason why my group is very excited around Moonshot, is because we see for the first time that we're starting to produce more physical hardware, much more geared towards certain types of application workloads. Now, you know, yes, we could do these things on, on blade technologies, on server technologies, and virtualization technologies, but it is kind of exciting to see that we're starting to now to evolve to the point that we're looking at um, very specific application workloads geared towards the compute that they have. So when we start to look at public clouds, now we're starting to get into much more um, specialization of those certain types of workloads. And that's very exciting for us. So what does that mean from a business value standpoint? Well, it means that when I go off and I engineer and I build out that application service, that I can figure out how to automate it, how to provision it, how to deal with all the um, bells and whistles and security and thoroughness that, that people expect. And really, it means that I'm able to offer that service at a cheaper price to the customer. Brent, I, I want to ask you, um, during the webcast, during the Q&A session, one, someone had a direct question for you and said, um, how will this affect your service offering? You kind of gave kind of a, a canned yeah. answer, it will affect our service <laughs> offering. Um, but can you, let's elaborate on that, because that really, I want to drill down on that, not because of your answer, but more of because it's complicated. It's a hard yeah. question to really answer, because it spans it, a lot of different it, things. Um, take us through the data center uh, environment for you guys, because you guys are a, what we call a modern environment. You get to deal with diversity of applications, and take us through the last couple of years, mm -hmm. and, and what Moonshot does given its new capability, and how does that affect yeah. up the stack? Well, certainly I'll, I'll try to approach that, but as you can imagine, that's a <laughs> very <laughs> multifaceted <laughs> question that I am sure there is a wide range of answers. You get 20 uh, minutes just on that one question. From a Savas perspective. But clearly, um, what I've seen over time is that we, we started with really looking at how can we offer compute, right? Savas was born out of the, the co-location hosting arm with the network component. And as the, the networks kind of evolved, we've moved from um, co-location into hosting into now cloud and now we're trying to get down into more and more application workloads. We have a, a common phrase that we like to use at Savas is moving up the stack and as we start to find the hardware and these services what really what we're hearing from our customers is that's great you're able to offer it in a cloud you're able to offer all these great options but at the end of the day I, I just need someone to manage my application. I need it as a platform as a service. I need it as a SaaS based offering. So what we're finding is that our customers are really asking for us to really move it up the stack. And that's yeah. where I see the market heading. And that's where I sense that you're going to find us spend a lot more time. Yeah. You're going to see a lot more services all the way from um, cloud databases, which we offer today, to public, to private, to our Savas Direct brand. 
um, to more and more specific application workloads. Yeah, I mean, I think I, agree, I totally agree with you, by the way. Moving up the stack is the way to go. And the reason why I asked the question was, Dave and I always talk about this, but just when I was in my trip here in Boston uh, recently, I asked uh, some CIO friends, we went out and we had a couple meetings, and they said, literally, they're like way behind the times. <laughs> they're still living in the dark ages <laughs> only a few <laughs> years ago of rack and stack. And they, and they have to deal with the, the challenges of mm -hmm. having stacked hardware. So they want to go cloud. Amazon's risky to them because of the SLA side of it. Um, but still, they got to deal with their legacy yeah. infrastructure where the number one conversation is power and cooling. Right. Huge issue. So can you elaborate? Because you're kind of like yeah. way down the pike if yeah. relative to what you guys are yeah. doing functionally. What's, the, what's that migration for that kind of customer? You like know, from a power and cooling standpoint and just deployment and putting it all together? You know, it, it's, that's a very interesting question. And the, the challenge that I have with that is really we're in the wrong conversation, right? Why are we talking about power and cooling? <laughs> Why aren't we talking about how can I better manage your application <laughs> and provide you a quality level of service that you can't get with other clouds? Yeah. You know, it, it gets into really more of a innovation <coughs> and an approach of what we're starting to take more of and lead in, in that market space of how can we take something as simple as WordPress, right? Something as simple as WordPress that anyone can do. This is not rocket science, but how can you do it in a way that's secure, that's scalable, that's highly automated, that has all the, the, the enterprise features of cloud as well as um, security, as well as being able to move and rapidly expand it as well as contract it and offer that as a push button service. Um, so. You know, typically when I, I hear conversations around, um, you know, power and cooling costs, and yeah, those are really important things to get into when you're managing a data center. They're op um, OpEx I issues. Mean, th those are definitely OpEx issues. It really boils down to what's the value? What's the value of the service that we're trying to provide? And with something like Moonshot, as well as all the other HP product lines, we've strived really hard at Savas to figure out better ways to um, procure, to operate, to manage, um, to put those in place so that way we can enable IT to really be more effective with what they do, um, to bring that lower cost of ownership. Frank, can you talk about some of the apps that are really driving your business? What are, what are customers and clients doing you know, with apps? What are right. some of the more interesting ones? You mentioned big data yeah. on the, the Q&A. Mm -hmm. You don't have to start there, yeah. but I do want to actually at some point ask you about that because it's such a hot topic. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's surprising because anytime you come out with something, there's always a customer that has a, another type of workload or another type of configuration that they want. What we've been seeing is certainly um, big data where you need to start off with a very small configuration of servers, like maybe eight, 10 servers, and then be able to rapidly grow that to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of servers. How, how do you do that is the key question. How do you do it effectively? How do you do it consistently? How do you do it so when the customer calls you up and says, you know what, I've got a bunch of data feeds that I need to ramp up. How do I go from five servers, 10 servers to 50 in a controlled mechanism? How can you deliver on that promise? And that's, those are the challenges that we're looking at and trying to figure out how do, we, how do we solve those problems? And then how do we make it flexible? Because no one comes to Savas and asks, you know, that's great, I, I, I know in six months that I'm going to be here, um, I think I might be there, but I need to be able to go up to scale, or maybe I need to be a little bit less than that. And by the way, I really want it to be more of a service, so I'm not investing the millions of dollars that it takes to put up the data center or the services around it, but I, I want to consume it as I use it. So these are, for instance, Hadoop workloads uh, at all? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, uh, right now our, our big data initiative is focused on Hadoop, uh, and we're looking at uh, various distributions of that. Okay, so, I mean, and that's a good one for the cloud. Yeah. Uh, the old oh, it's excellent saying, for the cloud. Like, the, cl the big data gives the cloud something to do. And um, <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but how about uh, other sort of tier one apps, yeah. you know, Oracle, SAP, I yeah. mean, c you, you talk to customers and you're starting to see those, you know, migrate, certainly in test yeah. and dev, but, but in production yeah, as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, clearly um, w with SAP, it's typically a lot around HANA, which is a, a huge success. We're seeing the uh, adoption of that. And they've got, uh, pretty much pre-configured deployments of those. And I suspect that you're going to see us uh, later this year uh, coming out with more service offerings around that. We're working uh, right now in the labs to build those out. But database workloads are a potential use for this as well. Um, certainly, when you start to compare um, really high-end database workloads, it, it, perhaps this is not the right platform, right? This is not, this is not geared for every conceivable application use. Um, HP didn't come out and say, hey, look at our platform, it's going to solve every application problem that you have. It's going to solve certain ones very well. 
and you still have to be out there looking at the architecture and understanding what the various compute platforms can offer, and then size and design your applications accordingly. At the, um, I want to shift gears a little bit, at the reInvent conference last fall, mm -hmm. Amazon got very aggressive um, and essentially you know, yeah. made an attempt to deposition the, the, the traditional enterprise players, particularly the on-premise, you know, the mm -hmm. private cloud uh, crowd, essentially saying private cloud is, you know, it doesn't make any sense, it's really not cloud, it's hybrid cloud, it's LPS, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Um, you, I would imagine, have a different take <laughs> on that. Um, I, that's not part of your marketing message. So talk a little bit about sort of your messaging there and generally and then specifically how you guys you know, compete with, with Amazon and I br broadly, yeah. and I know you're yeah. in the application side, but I'd be interested yeah. in your perspective there. Yeah, I mean, it, it only takes customers one time to be hacked to understand that there are real security implications to what it is that we're doing and not looking necessarily at the cheapest platform is always the right play. Um, certainly there are uh, software technologies that you spend millions, millions, millions of dollars on. The last thing you want to do is put it on a platform that can't possibly carry it. So, you know, when we start to look at what services does Savas offer, what services does Amazon, especially in the application space where, where I, I spend a lot of my time, you know, we focus a lot on um, the expandability of those workloads as well as the management of those workloads. So with Amazon, you get a platform that the IT has to manage on top of, or you have to go to a service provider or another third party SI to manage that application. We come to Savas and you buy the services that, that my group offers, we manage that entire stack for you. So if there is a problem with the web server or an app server or a database that goes down, our DBAs fix that. And we also bundle in licenses of those most common platforms as well. So when you go to Amazon, you can't buy the Oracle license o o associated with it or the other ones, where at Savvis, we've got very flexible models that we work very closely with those partners on. There's, there's a lot of pieces in play here, but clearly, from our perspective, it's more about offering it as a fully managed service with SLAs and being able to meet the needs of the customer and wrap around their entire environment. You gotta keep in mind, there's not one solution. There's no major company out there that just says cloud. What we're seeing a lot more of is people have co-location environments that want to make use of the cloud, and they need ways to connect into that, right? So at Savvis, we can allow you to start off in colo, move into managed hosting, move into cloud, and do all three at the same time. So not only that, but we can also wire up your network because we're part of CenturyLink, and CenturyLink is the third largest telco in the United States. And we've got um, data centers globally, as I, I said before, but uh, more importantly, we've got uh, cloud offerings globally as well. We really like what you guys are doing, and, and Dave and I always talk about this cloud is a reality. And I think my, you know my point earlier about the kind of the IQ level of where the old enterprise guys are, and kind of what you're doing is, I think they're going to do go to do a lot of cloud, and they want the SLA. So I want to ask you a question about, you know, as you continue to innovate your business around putting workloads into the cloud and making it faster. One of the things that we heard from Dave Donatelli about was with this mm -hmm. new architecture, the speed of announcements of new products. So mm -hmm. your challenge is to scale too, right? Yes. So can you talk about the balancing between scale, operating mm -hmm. scale on your end to buy these new solutions, the yeah. next analytics tool that's hosted in the cloud yeah. or other some of the workloads, and yeah. expansion of your footprint, which is a physical plant challenge. Right, I, I mean, you know, there's no shortage of problems <laughs> in our industry. Um, Opportunities. There, 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 <laughs> there's uh, an opportunity every day. So. You know, clearly, um, IT has been rapidly evolving. I think everyone in the industry mm -hmm. understands that things are moving at a more rapid pace. Um, a lot of the stuff that we try to do at Savvis is we're trying to enable the IT department by, by taking on those challenges, right? How do you provision? How do you auto scale it? How do you offer the SLAs? How do you, what data centers do they go in? How do you deal with the procurement and logistics of getting it there? Um, those are really tough challenges, and and really we're trying to find ways to make that faster and, and better than our. There's a huge um, fear to go to Amazon, and again, going talking to all of our my buddies in the IT world over the years, you know, Amazon's an easy value yeah. proposition to understand, yeah. right? But no one knows how to use it. Yeah, you got rights, you got some tools to work with, but the guys yeah. who are like in the enterprise are used to certain things, just mm -hmm. table stakes. What are those table stakes? And what would you say to those guys who are looking at Amazon, looking at cloud, 
um, knowing that there's some fear, like I know it's good. I'm just, I don't want to <laughs> put my, I don't want to get fired <laughs> for going to Amazon. But there's a fear. There. There's a legitimate yeah. fear. And Amazon's obviously resting, uh, trying to correct it, but there's a legitimate business value t table stakes. What are those table stakes? Well, I mean, first I would say um, certainly contact Savvis. We've got solutions around that, especially around our whole Savvis direct product line, which is geared more for that those types of users. Those table stakes are they want an environment to go up fast. They want to be able to use their credit cards. They want tools and services that are easy to consume, easy to understand, easy for their development teams to make use of. And then they want to be able to transition those because after you develop a platform, the last thing you want to do is then say, okay, well, I've got this, this platform here. Where do I go for QA? Where do I go for production? How do I migrate that workload from the stuff that my guys have developed on? Or integrate the, the disaster or recovery right, kind of? All the way up the stack. Yeah. So, you know, we're holistically thinking about this whole piece here. Certainly, we've got a whole cloud strategy um, around our various cloud offerings of how all those tie together. What inning are we in in the cloud? So assuming you know that, that there are guys out there who want to get to the cloud, want those SLAs, but there's a lot of kind of like, you know, in between the toes details around like disaster sure. recovery. I got to run sure. the, do all this like all this ops work inside the data center that you can't just put out in the cloud. So given mm -hmm. that this is pretty complicated on the IT side, what inning are we in in the cloud right now? Boy, I, I don't know if I could say what inning we're in, but I got a feeling it's going to go into a lot, of, a lot of extra innings <laughs> in this industry. Um, <laughs> it, might be that, uh, it might be that game uh, early in the week that went to 16 innings. <laughs> um, it, it's really hard to say, but the interesting thing is, is that, you know, the, the market's been evolving each decade, every year, and what's getting really crazy now is the amount of density, the amount of power, the amount of performance improvements that we're seeing, especially with HP and others in the space. Um, you know, cloud is, is certainly a paradigm shift for a lot, of, uh, a lot of our customers, and they're looking for ways of how they can really effectively use it. Kind of like I said earlier, um, you know, if you look at it just from a simple compute standpoint, you know, we need to take it up one more notch. I think it's going to evolve into much more application-centric um, conversations than it is about how many cores, how much power, how much memory. Well, business value and workloads. Yeah. So what are you seeing? I mean, what, what's driving? I mean, during the recession, a lot of people, you know, accelerated their move to cloud because they wanted to reduce right. their, their OPEX or the CAPEX and shift it to OPEX. But um, the, the cloud has got to be more than that. Yeah. Um, what are you seeing? I mean, you know, obviously we're seeing a lot of customers um, want the OPEX model. Um, specifically, what, what we're seeing is customers not only just want the cloud, but they want the platforms and the applications on top of the cloud to be easy to consume as the cloud is today. Um, so it's a know, service model. It, it's a, it's a service model that, that they want. That they can't necessarily get there, it's too hard to get no. there internally. No, certainly not, not everyone. But what we're finding is, you know, out of, in, in my group, out of uh, about 100 requests, we're seeing about 80 of those wanting Savvis to offer more applications and platforms as, as a service inside there to in leverage in the cloud technologies as, as we see fit to, to, to better help the customer operate that environment. So they want a, an app store for their enterprise? <laughs> yes, they do. Kind of what they're going after? Yes. Yeah, and how about the, the whole notion of this this hybrid extension of the, the private? Are you seeing that in a big way? Um, right. Is there that drive for homogeneity from their you know private to cloud to their to their uh, external? You know, every everyone wants to be able to leverage the assets that they paid for, right? So wh what we're finding is uh, being able to transition from co-location into cloud is a really big, big motivating driver, right? Um, you've already paid for that capital sitting out there, and really what you're looking for is the ability to make use of more cost-effective models, and how you do that is, is really the key. Mm -hmm. And you also find, almost with all major enterprises, that you've got a variety of providers out there. I mean, they're, they're not just all sitting in, in one data center. They're sitting in multiple data centers um, globally. And then how do you manage the disaster recovery? How do you manage the SLAs? How do you keep consistency uh, across all those? And, and those are fundamental challenges that I see a lot of customers struggle with, especially as, as something as easy as an app server, right? Okay, so that's, uh, we're up on out of time. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. We appreciate it, Brent. Uh, always, always good to have you guys on, especially digging into some of those yeah. details around cloud. Obviously, extra innings is going to happen, yeah. which means it's a really, really viable business. A no-brainer. Cloud is here. Cloud is here to stay. There's really no hype. It's a reality. Uh, how it gets rolled out is a whole other ball game. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's going to be a good service opportunity for a lot of folks out there and a good opportunity for the enterprise. This is theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.